I was sitting in the car in the parking lot of 7-Eleven in Delaware. And I was in the car with this boy that I really liked. I had a crush on him. And um, I was eating peppermints and gummy bears, which are my favorite candies. And I was so dumb. I had such a big crush on him. I would have done anything he said. And he was like, you should call yourself Peppermint Gummy Bear. And I was like, all right. And it kind of stuck. So it's kind of too late to change it now. But I've since, I've since then, I've gotten a divorce. And I usually just go by Peppermint. One of my first shows that I probably ever did was at the Tunnel, which is a legendary nightclub that was here in New York City in the 90s. And um, I... I performed for, at a party called Curfew, which was like a college party. It was probably not as polished as things are these days. <laughs> you know, everybody was drunk. It was a nightclub. Lights were flashing. And I was really nervous. I think I went to like Joyce Leslie or some really cheap store to go buy a dress on 34th Street. And, and I went out and lip synced. I shop at like the prostitute stores on 34th Street, you know, for my clothes. You know, cheap, $20, get a dress, you can wear it three times, and it falls apart. Our school had a competition called the Homely Court, which is, happened at homecoming game time. And the girls dressed as football players, and the boys had to dress as cheerleaders. So I dressed, and I won. I was not a football player. I liked the football players. I was a cheerleader in high school. Um, I didn't know she was a drag queen. Who? Peppermint? Oh, I... I know Peppermint since she was a little baby drag queen. So I know her out of drag. And I don't approve. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Oddly enough, there's almost no difference other than a <laughs> fierce tuck, a wig, and a <laughs> gown, you know? I think it all just kind of groups into one big thing. I mean, when you see a big buxom black girl like herself do the splits on a beer-soaked stage in front of a hundred faggots needing a rock show, you know? I, th I think that kind of covers the arena of what Peppermint does on a nightly basis. A perfect night for me is one where I can get myself together and get to work on time where there's a million people in the audience and the kicks are higher than they've ever been, the notes are louder than they've ever been, and everybody's having a good time throwing me $100 bills at the end of the night. I meet Prince Charming and we move to Hawaii. That is a perfect night. But usually it ends up being, you know, I get to the bar, everyone's really drunk, I'm late, and, you know, I meet some homeless guy outside who wants to go home with me, but I don't want to go home with him. And then I end up losing my keys um, and having to climb down my neighbor's fire escape and get into my apartment uh, to, get, to get in. That's usually how things kind of end up, so I'll have to keep you posted. I'll take even half a perfect day. I mean, she's a constant walking highlight reel. Winning Entertainer of the Year, I mean, again, that w the first time I won Entertainer of the Year, I was speechless. Because it's, it's kind of hard. Doing, doing this, doing drag, and being a nightlife person, or a DJ, or a bartender, you know, we're out till 4 o'clock in the morning every day. And we, you know, we see a lot of people and we know that they appreciate us. We get regulars that come in and leave us tips and things like that. But it's pretty rare that, you know, we don't get raises. We don't have, um, you know, insurance or a pension. So it's kind of hard to see the long-term benefits of your, of your job in, when you're in the nightlife industry. But um, every once in a while, or once every year, when they have these fabulous award shows and ceremonies, it's a good time to get together and kind of get some just pure recognition. If I'm seeing somebody, I prefer that they don't come to my shows. I don't want anybody else to know them. I just want to have them all to myself so that it doesn't start to blur. My perfect boyfriend or husband would be some nerdy banker during the day who has a nine to five job and doesn't go out to bars at all. That would be perfect. Is it peppermint? Girl, you were in HX 29 times to everyone at every bar. The Asian peppermint, black peppermint, Latin peppermint. I mean, peppermint go to Canada. Sometimes she works seven, seven times a week, ten times a week. She said, peppermint, there's only seven nights in a week. And she says, I sometimes do two or three gigs. I know what she does. I don't know how she gets it done. But she also has lots of white slaves, so I'll get into that later. Let's just say I know how to get things done. So we actually have a joke amongst ourselves, those of her, us that work with her, that she has um, it programmed into her phone to say, 
I'm running 15 minutes late. <laughs> because inevitably, we can plan on getting that text message every single week.